Survivor has been on for a long time, and as a result has been experimenting with a lot of twists. Some are good, others are not good, but there are ones so bad that even the contestants are against them. Number 5 comes from Matt in the most recent season of Survivor. Now this is at the bottom because Matt doesn't call out the twist by name, but definitely expresses his concerns. In episode 7, production decided earning the merge wasn't enough for the contestants, and redivided the tribes. Again, the twist took the 11 contestants and put them into two new tribes of five with Pokemon enthusiast Carson in the middle. The goal was to be the last one standing, except Survivor Production took this to the extreme. Whoever lasted the longest in the Endurance Challenge won group immunity for their team and they were all guaranteed the final 10. However, the person that lasted the longest out of the losing group won individual immunity. So yeah. A lot of immunity. To make matters worse, Carson picks the group that eventually wins. This means within a tribe of 11, literally four people can be voted for. Four! Jeff on his podcast talks about how in the new era contestants have to earn everything. But it seems like the production team have got a bit too laser focused on that ideology and now it's backfired. Now the contestants just have to be part of the winning group to guarantee they survive the merge. And this final 11 twist means a person can literally lose the challenge in 5 seconds, but still be immune. Just because they had a challenge beast on their team. Back at camp, Matt talks to the rest of the tribe about how the best at Survivor might not always do the best in the game, which just so happens to be right after the controversial challenge twist. Coincidence? I think not. Now to give credit to production, they did include this in the finished product, but they immediately undercut him with Brandon's words about how the best always find a way out of every situation. And as you'll see throughout the rest of this video, this is an editing trope that continues where the person that complains about a twist gets thrown under the bus. But I do agree with Matt, the modern format, through its many twists and occasional aspects of deception, even to the point of lies, does make luck a bigger factor. From the most recent season to the oldest on the list, we now have Mike White. Now you may be wondering what twist in David vs Goliath, the season he featured on, was argued against by Mike. Ugh. None of them. You see, this argument was entirely behind closed doors. Well, until Jeff told every news site, but psh, specifics, if you've watched Zach Wartenberger's video on the Forgotten Survivor 41 season, you may think I'll be talking about its twist. If you haven't seen Zach's video, I highly encourage you to, but near the end of it, he reveals Survivor 41 was supposed to be fire token centered, where contestants traded them for resources. This was done in a stall with the trader being the infamous Rick Devins. Just like he's the resident evil for merchant. Jeff called up Mike to hear his thoughts on the idea, only for him to say it was completely stupid and asked Jeff to stop the twist. But the instance we'll be covering is actually before David vs Goliath and instead season 29, San Juan del Sur. Jeff and Mike White have been friends for many years before Mike competed on Survivor himself. When the dual concept of San Juan del Sur was announced where loved ones had to compete against one another, fans of the 20s noticed a uh, certain similarity. Jeff called Mike weeks before filming began to tell him Redemption Island would be returning yet again for season 29. And Mike told him he was stupid. Within weeks this man got Jeff to see the light and the fourth return of Redemption Island was overhauled. And this change was for the better in my opinion, although I can only dread to think of the uproar from the community at this time if we got Redemption Island again. Praise be to the Goliath drunkenly stumbling around in a forest. And on the topic of Redemption Island, we're visiting yet another controversial season. Ladies and gentlemen, Finally, we get to talk about Survivor New Zealand. 
This comes from the 2016 edition, and while fans complain about the format twist, containing a cast of literally 16 people going on for 20 episodes, the contestants had something different in mind. In episode 5, Mogaton had to vote out another tribe member, the third in a row, creating a 7-5 deficit. This irked Tom and Avi on the tribe because of the format. In this season, they had tribal reward and immunity challenges, but the same people could sit out in back-to-back -back challenges. In the previous episode, Jack, Nate and Barb all sat out despite Nate sitting out of the reward challenge. It was understandably rather unfair for Tom and Avi to continuously have to go up against the New Zealand equivalent of Mike Holloway and Aussie Lazuth. Lee even has the Aussie hair on deck. Surprisingly, the production team immediately took this criticism on board, and by the next episode, the Hermosa tribe couldn't set out the same people in back-to-back -back challenges. This resulted in stronger competitors like Shannon and Georgia taking a seat. This is also a big topic in Survivor US. In season 44, Claire was voted out, despite never competing in an immunity challenge, and always sitting out. In older Survivor seasons, you would have reward and immunity challenges, where contestants couldn't sit out in back-to-back -back challenges. Challenges, but since Survivor US stopped most tribal rewards, the set out criteria no longer applies. Jeff has talked about this on his podcast and identifies it could be an issue, so it'll be interesting to see how they approach changes. In my opinion, like Survivor New Zealand, they should just reintegrate the rule back into the show, just with immunity challenges this time. And on the topic of challenges, at number 2 we have the Edge of Extinction, which is just... fun. Fun, 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 I'm having fun. The Edge of Extinction is regarded by the community to be one of the more unfair survivor twists. And this came to blows in the finale of season 38. In episode 3, Chris was voted out. Chilled on the edge for two thirds of the game and then returned at the final six with a gifted idol. To give Chris his credit, he manipulated Lauren, made bonds with Rick, and just generally did as much as you could do with only a few days left in the game. As a result, Chris had a surprising amount of ammunition to present to the jury when it was his turn to pitch his game. This didn't sit well with Gavin, another finalist, and made his opinion known that he disagreed with the Edge of Extinction. He told everyone the idol Chris found was gifted to him rather than him having to discover it through hard work, Chris only spent a handful of days in the game, and Gavin actually had to make social bonds within the game to survive, while Chris was just getting by on the Edge. It's a very compelling pitch to the jury, I might say. Just, uh, one problem, Gavin. Almost all of the jury lived on the edge of extinction. Most envisioned them sitting in the seat Chris was occupying and were thankful that the edge extended their life in the game. As a result, many pick out Gavin's flaws, such as Julia saying Chris did more with his limited time than Gavin did in the whole game, and War Dog even stops Gavin to let him know that the edge isn't on trial, but instead the finalists are. Gavin's criticisms of the Edge are largely valid, and I mostly agree with him. In fact, some individuals in the community still consider Gavin as the winner of Edge of Extinction. To this day, and they still rebuke Chris Underwood as the winner. As salt in the wound, the Edge of Extinction returned only two seasons later, largely unchanged, showing production clearly didn't agree with Gavin when he said the island was too unfair. Well Erica, how are you today? You enjoying the Fijian weather? That's good. <laughs> I, uh, I I noticed you have a hammer there that looks super cool. Just be careful with swinging that thing around, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you might break something. Erica, no! Judgment Day is here and Erica is dropping the hammer on number one. The Hourglass, but instead we'll pivot to Danny. In season 41, the tribes were split into two groups and fought for the merge feast and immunity, as explicitly stated by Jeff. Danny was part of this winning group. Good for him. That was until Erica was sent to exile and smashed the Hourglass in a decision of essentially whether she wanted immunity or not. She obviously took the deal. Who wouldn't? And everyone in Danny's group had to give their buffs to the other group, as they are now eligible to be voted out. Because they... won a challenge. Danny is obviously annoyed, and gets his group to reiterate Jeff's words. Feast and immunity. 
As one of my commenters note, the Hourglass twist literally undoes the whole point of earning the merge, which takes away the win from a strong team and gives the win to a team loaded with weaker players. Much like the Matt situation earlier on this list, we get Danny immediately thrown under the bus in the edit, saying it's a new era and these things should be expected. And then he was purpled out of the edit for the next few episodes. Ouch. Once again, I at least appreciate the production team included this in the edit, but apparently off camera Danny voiced his opinion even more and really informed them about how unfair the hourglass was. Considering this wasn't even deception and from my perspective just a straight up lie, I wouldn't be surprised if any of the contestants considered legal action. Survivor 42 followed the 41 format closely and so the hourglass returned for it. That being said, the contestants in the winning group could swap with Roxroy. This hourglass still retained the mechanic of taking immunity away from the winners though, and contestants like Tori were notably upset that season. Are there any twist contestants argued against that I didn't include in this video? Let me know in the comments. On screen now, our five times production almost ended their contestants in challenges. I spent a lot of time on this video, so make sure you check it out. Nonetheless, enjoy your day, and peace!